Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and success. Our guest today is Kristen Owens. Kristen is a leading nutrition and holistic lifestyle expert who carries over two decades in the wellness industry. She is a mom of three and resides in Toronto, Canada, running an online health practice. Kristen equips the busy entrepreneurial women and men with simple strategies to incorporate daily health habits that will bring sustainable natural weight loss, consistent energy, and hormone balance while aging free of chronic dis-ease. Welcome to the show, Kristen. Thank you, Joanne, for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Um, uh, Myself as well. Health is a big part of my uh, repertoire because if people aren't healthy, they can't be an entrepreneur. That's right. Amen to that. You can't think, you can't work. You can't. And so, it's every- before we were recording, uh, we were talking about a couple of things. And one of the things I'm sure the audience wants to know is how you got on this path because people choose what they do for different reasons. And also, uh, I'm curious about uh, one thing we spoke about was how our lifestyle in the past almost one year has created a lot of excess weight, fatigue, and hormone imbalance, and therefore Mm. we lose energy, and therefore we don't want to work, and we don't want to do anything, even though there's not much to do. Um, And then how we can make our health a habit so that we can avoid overwhelm and burnout, which is one of my keywords for my work with entrepreneurs. So how did you get here? Well, good question. It's been many, many years, actually. I uh, have always been in the wellness space back um, when I was a teenager, well, from the age of six until about 16, I figure skated. So I've always been, you know, active and moving. Um, When I went into high school and I stopped skating, I got to this place where I just felt I was feeling different because I wasn't moving. I wasn't active. And that was really the first time I really realized the importance of taking care of your body is when I actually wasn't taking care of my body the same way as I had. And so I, I stopped skating and I, I realized I had to do something. So I actually was at the time doing the 20 minute workout. I would actually do that workout. Then I would go and teach my friends and my friends would always say, you know, Kristen, you really should uh, teach. Well, teach aerobics is what we called it back then. And so, uh, so that's what I did at 19. I became a fitness instructor, aerobics instructor, and um, that led me to go to school for fitness and health promotion, um, you know, kinesiology, physiology, all that fun stuff. And um, it was when I was about 23, believe it or not, at 23, I, so I was managing a corporate wellness uh, facility at McDonald's head office of all places. Um, I was working there eight hours a day, and then I would go and I would teach um, around the Toronto area. I would teach a Pilates, I had a Pilates company, so I would actually run classes and do privates, and I would do that after I was finished managing this uh, program, and I was exhausted. Now, you think, at 23, I should have lots of energy, I should feel good. I was experiencing a lot of what women come to me for now, which is, you know, they're bloated, they have that you know, last 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds to lose. They they know that they, you know, even though they're not 23 and they're in their 40s and 50s, they know that they can feel better. They know that how they feel isn't quite where they want to be or where they think they should be. Well, I was feeling that acne, um, bloated. I was just exhausted. So I went to the place that I knew you would go if you needed help with your health, and that was the doctor's office. I went right. to the doctor's office And the doctor told me I just needed to drink orange juice. And I thought, orange juice? I mean, I don't know. I didn't know then what I know now. And I thought, and I didn't know how the body works like I know now. And I thought, orange juice? That just doesn't seem right. And so I left the office and I basically unconsciously, I basically said I made the decision that I guess I have to take my health into my own hands. 
And that was really when my journey started um, at 23, 24, when my journey started of really owning my health. And I understood that nobody else could really, um, you know, help me with my health except me. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, the biggest thing is when you make a decision to change something or you make a decision that this is what you're going to do. My decision was I am going to take my health in my own hands. I I don't give up on things. I am determined. I'm focused. And that's what I did. And it's amazing how all of a sudden things change in the universe to open, you know, you've heard the the saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. I met a client who I didn't even know that she did this side of um, what she did on the side of what she actually, her career. And that was, um, you know, nutrition supplements and this sort of thing. Now, I didn't know anything. I ended up, she hit on all my pain points. And I just, I said, sign me up. I want to, I want to feel better because we, people are looking to feel better. They go to the gym or go and work out because they want to feel a certain way. They look after their health or they want to embark on a health journey because we want to feel a certain way. And so um, anyways, fast forward, I had my first daughter at 28 and that's when I got into the holistic uh, field and really holistic being looking at the entire person because it's not just about what you eat. It's not just about the movement that you do. We need to look at the emotions, the stress, which is huge. We need to look at mentally what's going on, you know, in between our ears. How are we speaking to ourselves? There are so many different aspects that we need to look at. And so fast forward, that was uh, actually 18 years last week. Uh, And fast forward, I have studied energy medicine, um, plant-based medicine, holistic nutrition, um, all, all, I mean, it just goes on and on, NLP, and Currently now, I really what I do is I really help women, specifically women, I do have some men clients, but specifically women that come to me that they want to age well, they want to feel amazing as they get older. They Yes, they want to release stubborn belly fat and, and extra weight, but they understand that it's about lifestyle. They understand that they can't just focus on weight loss. They want to um, they want to prevent disease. They want to be able to play with their grandkids. They want to enter into their 50s where, you know, menopause is not something they need to dread. Um, and so I focus a lot on hormone balance, specifically um, around stress, cortisol, adrenals, and insulin, blood sugar. Um, because when you work on that, many, many other hormones end up changing and coming into balance. I would look at cleansing, detoxify, detoxification, because this is what our body is designed to do anyways. And I look at whole food, plant-based. So it doesn't mean that a person necessarily, um, you know, is not supposed to eat meat. However, I believe that we are not eating enough plants. And I believe people um, can really benefit from learning how they can add more plant-based material into their health because that's going to improve cellular vitality. So that's how... Don't drink the orange juice, people. That's right. (laughs) You have to know what orange juice really is. If you want orange, eat the orange. Yes. Instead of the orange juice because the orange juice is just filled with sugar. Exactly. You could have a candy, you could probably have five candy bars for one eight ounce glass of OJ. You got it. And, you know, for me being fatigued, I mean, there was another, I was out of balance, of course, but I mean, if, if you're tired and you're going for the orange juice, the coffee, the sugar, that is going to keep you on that vicious cycle and that vicious roller coaster, and you will not be able to get off. And then your weight will start creeping more. And it just, it's a vicious cycle. So eat the yeah. orange, don't eat, drink the orange juice. Yeah, because sugar loves sugar. Um, once you eat yes. sugar, your body craves sugar. It's, it's, it is a drug. I mean, yes. it's a drug. Yeah, probably the only drug that I am engaged or involved with. <laughs> but um, people don't understand that how bad juices are for you. Mm. So yeah. what's interesting uh, is as a macro concept is – what you just described when you open yourself up in a particular arena and you did for holistic healthcare, other things appear that align with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody uh, who's listening needs to understand that concept because uh, with Kristen, it's health, it's holistic health with you. It may be something else you who are listening, but once you open up the door wide to receive information, it comes pouring in. Mm-hmm. You know, as it did with Kristen, because this is important. I mean, not, I mean, she's doing so many things 
including the hormone balance and detoxification. And detox can be extreme, and I don't think we want to devote too much time to that here. But, but let's talk about what's going on right now. Let's talk about the fatigue and the stress. Mm-hmm. How can people, especially women, uh, handle the fatigue that is presented? Because everybody's tired because nobody's going out, at least the people who are listening. Well, they may or may not be going out and having fun, but very few people are engaged in the real world. They're engaged yeah. virtually. Yes. So, you know, you can go for so many, just so many walks, believe me. And, you know, there's just so much you could do without experiencing, you know, the TLC of hugging another person out of your bubble. So what can women do about the fatigue? Yeah, very good question, because, you know, fatigue really can come up from so many different areas, right? Like, for example, um, you know, just where our emotions are at, right? Especially with what's going on in the past year, where are our emotions, those low vibration emotions can suck the energy out of us. Um, You know, in my situation back when I was in my 20s, I mean, part of it was I wasn't eating as well as I thought I was. I, I didn't really, I only knew, I could only do what I knew to do at that time. So, so those listening, you're doing the best with what you know, but when we are able to receive new information or information we've never learned before, then we put that into practice and then we take it to another level. So fatigue is going to come from so many different places. It could be because we're having too much coffee, for example, that because caffeine is a drug, um, just like sugar is a drug and it is more addictive than cocaine. So, you know, there's so many different aspects, but how do we deal with it? Firstly is looking at where it could be coming from. And that's one of the things that I, how I work with um, women is looking at what's going on in their life, right? Because the stress that we have, you know, if we're not getting outside, um, you know, we need that fresh air. It's going to help to strengthen our immune system, give us energy. Um, If we're not socializing, what can we do now that is going to help to lower our stress levels that, you know, balance out our cortisol because if we're always on constant stress mode because of various different reasons then what happens is is that our body becomes fatigued so we got to look at okay so I went for a walk today you know um, how can I get more um, plant-based food and how can I get more greens in that's going to support me how can I you know what can I do that is going to make me feel Um, energized or make me feel good because again we're always looking for humans are looking to feel good so what is it now we have to be more we've got to reinvent ourselves almost so what can we do we can't necessarily I guess you could travel but like for me I'm not traveling so okay so what am I going to do and I've had to be creative because it's like, oh my gosh, if I stay in this house any longer, I'm going to scream. <laughs> like oh, I want to know. I right? feel trapped. I understand. It gets yes. too much. Oh, and too also, much. Another thing I want to bring it up, but people yeah. don't realize that fatigue uh, kills or certainly harms your immune system. Yes. Yeah. Um, Big way because you're going to get sick, not from COVID, you get sick from something else. Exactly. And that's a lot of what's happening, right? Yes. So, it's a lot of what's happening. So again, it really is number one is looking at, okay, what can I do? And it might be, you have to reach out to support groups, like on social media, um, friends, whatever it is, find out what are they doing? What can we do? Reinventing yourself. What can we do to have fun? Now I don't suggest as well. I'm finding that I want to bake a lot. No, the st- what I bake is actually healthier. So, but again, it's still, we don't want to always be, Um, looking to what is going to make us feel good when it comes to food, right? Um, Because we tend to be very, food is very addictive and very emotional, right? So we feel tired. So guess what we do? Or we feel emotional, we go and eat. And just like I said to you, Joanne, before um, we were recording, is how many of us when we're tired, we're bored, or we're emotional, or whatever it is, stressed, how many of us crave salad? Nobody, nobody craves salad, right? Most of the time, we are craving the things that make us 
feel good and release serotonin and dopamine in the brain. And we're like, ah, oh, this feels better. But this is why, Joanne, why the average after, what was it, three months? I don't even remember the time. What actually most people said, they called it, no. what was it? No longer COVID, COVID-19, it was covid 20 or something because of how much oh, like weight 15 like the yeah, yeah. college freshman yeah. 15 yeah because they gained they gained that much weight and it's true because people are at home people are bored so what do we do when we're bored what Eat. do we do when we're low exactly exactly so you know what the thing is is that too much of good food is still if we're not burning it if we're not you know metabolizing right. that where it where is it going to go it, it has to go somewhere so it's going to go in our hips right absolutely So you've got to, we got to reinvent ourselves and look at, okay, how can I make the best of the time I've got? And really as hard as it may be for some people even is looking at how can I, because this is going to help to calm your stress response is look at how, what am I grateful for? What has, what, and we've all heard this before is what has, what good has come out of this? Yes, there's things that have come out that aren't so good, but there's always a silver lining to everything. And for some of us, I know for me, I, I never really, um, what positive thinking and all of that uh, area was never my strong point. I, my brain typically just goes to negative. I'm much better today. However, some of us have to work on that and we have to discipline ourselves to focus on what is the silver lining. Because here's the thing is we all have a stress response. And when we are, you know, our body was designed to handle stress, but the stress that it was designed to handle, which was just, you know, here and there, it wasn't every day, all day is, you know, when we were many years ago, we had to hunt for food. And so when we came across a bear or some animal that could kill us, the idea was our body releases cortisol. It shuts off digestion. It it basically, um, sends us the ability to run from the danger. If you're out on in a dark alley and somebody comes up with a knife, you want cortisol and you want it rushing through your body and adrenaline because that is designed for you to go, oh my gosh, I'm running out of here, right? The problem is, is that we are living in a world, especially nowadays. um, I mean, I said that a year ago, but now even more so is we're living in a time where we are, chronically stressed and our body does not know the difference between we need to run for our lives or because we're sitting in traffic. Well, I guess maybe we're not doing so that so much anymore, but some people are um, sitting in front of the computer for too long, not moving our body. I'm not talking about exercising. I'm talking about just moving our body, not eating properly, emotional, financial, this people losing their businesses. Like what's going on is it's detrimental and it's, 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 it's causing issues within our uh, physiology. And so our body is constantly, cortisol levels are constantly being released, which then is causing our blood sugar to rise because cortisol and blood sugar is aligned. And then we're craving, right? And so then this is happening and it's constantly happening. And what, and then of course, what happens is we start to notice once we get to a place of burnout, which is when we're not listening to the body's cues and signals, because the body is always talking to us, we are on autopilot and we're just going, going, going until we know we're tired, but we're like, oh, I can do this. I've always done this. But the problem is, is eventually the body cannot sustain that. It can't. And so, because it was never meant, it was never designed to sustain um, this kind of thing. And so what happens is we burn out. And if, and any of you listening, if you've ever experienced that, or, you know, someone burnout is where, you know, you're, you, you can't function. And then it turns off, you know, can turn off body systems and organs. And, and if you have, we all have weak body systems or weak organs, um, to begin with. And so what can happen is it can cause, those body systems or organs to then just either just become really tired and weak and then it starts giving us symptoms and then we have we have bigger problems so my thing is is what i i do a lot of speaking and i always i always want to share that you want to it it, what's that saying um prevention is worth oh the it's all about prevention right prevention uh, prevention is worth something percentage a pound of cure. Oh, you know, yes. I think we all know what I'm trying, what we're trying to say right. here, but prevention is easier than if you have to, um, if you end up sick, 
if you end up having to deal with whatever, um, whatever is diagnosed. It's way easier to prevent illness or dis-ease than it is to have to deal with it. It's, it's easier emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, financially, it's easier. So the, so the one thing that I really want to drive home is we need to listen to our bodies because our bodies are always whispering to us and telling us like, you need to rest. You know, if you have a cold or you have, you know, a flu or, or whatever that comes this time of year, that's normal. As a natural health practitioner, I want people to understand that it is normal for you to have a cold or a flu. You actually want to have colds and flus because it's actually reminding your immune system how to work and how to be str- and to be strong. So if we keep, but the thing is, is that if we keep going and we have a cold and we're tired, we're like, oh, but I got a project to do, or oh, you know, this has to be done in my business. There is nothing that can't wait. There, your health. There's nothing that's more important than your health. Everything is figure outable, figure outable, and everything um, can wait. And so what happens is we just keep going, 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 and then eventually our body's like. You know, I've told you too many times and I, and then we're out for, you know, whatever length of time it is. So it's always prevention beats um, or is worth more than a pound of cure, something like that. So very important. So what can you tell, um, what tips, I know I don't want to diminish your work because it's, it's amazing. And I am totally supportive of being healthy. People seem to forget you know, I'm sure everybody's got a grandmother or a great grandmother or, or an uncle or somebody or an aunt who said, you know, if, if you have your health, you have everything. Mm-hmm. And with good health, you can do anything. But if you have bad health, you can't do crap. And excuse my yeah. professional word, but that's the truth. If you yeah. are fatigued, overweight, stressed out, you're in bed and you may never get out of that. So, what would be the first thing that you would tell uh, our audience today? I would say that first and foremost, as you said, because it's so true, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Um, You know, there's a quote, and I I don't even know who says this quote, but I mean, it just sums it up so beautifully is um, when you have your health, I say this all the time. It's this beautiful. When you have your health, you have a thousand dreams. When you don't, you only have one. And for people listening, I mean, there's so many things that I could suggest. um, And it's going to be different for each person where they're at. But the first thing is, um, and this is not even related to nutrition or um, it, it really is about It encompasses everything. And so what's actually coming out of my spirit right now is that self-care and that nurturing is really, you know, leaving this podcast and taking away, because I always say that just take one thing away. It doesn't have to be overwhelming or um, too big. Just take one thing and put that into practice. And so what I would say after everything we've talked about, because I feel like right now in our conversation, this is what is the most important is Making self-care, and I'm not talking about pedicures and manicures, although those are nice. I'm talking about self-care, making that first. And the self-care I'm talking about is the self-care where you are making your health a priority, whatever that. So I don't know, maybe it means you're drinking more water. Maybe it means you need to reach out to somebody, um, you know, a practitioner or somebody in the industry that can help you. Maybe it is uh, adding more greens into your everyday. Maybe it's getting to bed early, but self-care um Another thing to think about is self-care being, are you staying in in integrity with the goals and the commitments that you set for yourself at the beginning of this year? Because we're recording this right now at the last week of January, and most people in the last week of January being in the fitness industry for as long as I have, January is our biggest time of the year. September is like the, the second New Year's, but January is huge. So usually by February, February is maybe not as bad as, as it was prior, but it's still people are falling off. And so being in integrity with what you feel or what you believe you are worth and your health is worth a lot more than probably you believe. And if you're an entrepreneur or a professional person, um, you know, if you cannot be successful in business, 
if you do not have your health and if you are not making it a priority. So if you're running from one meeting to the next and, you know, doing the things you need to do in your business, but you're forgetting to eat those three meals a day, because really we don't need to be snacking because that affects our insulin hormones, all of that. But those three meals and their balanced meals. And if you're not, um, if you're not focusing on who you're showing up as, as a, as, instead of always just doing, 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 but you're not thinking about how you're showing up for yourself, that's part of the self-care, and how you show up for yourself is going to reflect back on how you show up to your clients and to, you know, the people that you're serving. So that would probably be my, uh, what is resonating with me really strongly right now is today, because I don't always say the same tip in every podcast that I, I'm on, but this one, what's resonating now is that self-care. Um, it's going to change how you, your body handles stress. It's going to change how you show up in your business. It's going to change how you serve your people. It's game changing. It really is. I totally agree. I'm always about putting yourself first on all levels because I say put yourself first, last, and always. So, Kristen Owens, how can people find you? Yes. So, uh, social media, two pl- platforms that I'm on regularly is Facebook. So, at Kristen Owens Wellness. So, K-R-I-S-T-E-N. I'm sure it will be in the show notes. Instagram, at Kristen Owens Wellness. And, uh, and then I have, yeah, those would be the two. And I have a Facebook group as well um, that you can find me with on Instagram and on and Facebook as well. Perfect. So I want everybody listening to re-listen. And uh, if you're on the website, my website, listening to uh, Kristen Owens' podcast about putting yourself first regarding your health, you will also see a link to an ebook. Which ebook uh, do we have up there on the website, Kristen? Uh, well, there's two of them there. One of them, well, not two ebooks, but one of the the actual ebook is. Um, is it's called the four day jump start cleanse jump start and basically it's a four day um, recipe plan um, meal plan it's all there in a nice package to basically help you you can follow it and that will be a start of stepping into greater self care when it comes to your health because it's all alkalizing rich foods uh, cellular vitality um, will increase because of these foods. But the second thing is my four video masterclass series, which is all based on balancing hormones and resetting metabolism. So women who are, um, you know, have lots going on, um, which is probably everyone listening, women who maybe are um, tired of weight that doesn't seem to want to come off or f- tired, you know, just tired, fatigued, uh, cravings, uh, but you want to age well. You know that, you know, you're, you're getting, we're, I mean, we're all aging every, every week, right? Every day we're aging. So you want to set your body up in a place where you can age feeling amazing because I promise you when you follow what I teach, you people will, I have clients that people tell my clients that they are, they actually say this, you are aging backwards. Like, what are you doing? So if you are one of those women that just want to take care of yourself, you want to step into and show up greater for your family, for your business, for your life. And um, you want to take care of some nagging, uh, you know, nagging issues that bother you, um, whatever it is around the health, this program is, uh, is great for that. So a four video masterclass series. There we go, folks. I want to thank Kristen Owens for being here today and sharing a wealth of information with our listeners. As I say, listeners review this podcast again. And for those of you uh, who want another way of being true to yourself, go to my website at askjoannevictoria.com slash podcasts and get your free copy of the True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life. I hope everybody has a great day and enjoys this podcast with Chris Owens. This is Joanne Victoria signing off. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to askjoannevictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.